Yeah. Um, in order to give uh, a more complete picture of how uh, how the Lord helped me uh, in the in the nineteen eighties, how He actually delivered me from from the from the court from the court of uh, of word of faith uh, prosperity doctrines and and uh, and new apostolic reformation uh, they, 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 I need to give the following uh, uh, episode the, the is 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 another way that actually uh, the Lord Jesus Christ extended His uh, hand of mercy on me after the after the, uh, the 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 Bible study of John chapter fourteen, chapter fifteen, chapter sixteen. A few a few months. A few months or so later, uh, there was there was uh, a very strange development uh, on this same issue. One of those days, I I went to the church. On uh, this was a Sunday. This this uh, this issue, this story started on a Sunday. Uh, I went on. The, I went to. To the church. The, the church uh, uh, is a uh, New Estate Baptist Church. The the, the New Estate Baptist Church uh, uh, is in Surulere. I went to the church, and uh, as we came out from the church that morning. Uh, I saw some book vendors. We we all know some of these uh, booksellers, particularly religious booksellers. They come to the church on Sundays. This particular Sunday, as I came out from the church, uh, just a few meters from the from the from the entrance exit of the church, I saw this. Uh, Fender selling books. He displayed his books on the on the ground, on the floor there. And uh, my attention was uh, uh, on a particular book that I saw. Uh, I can't remember the particular one. Uh, from an author I did not know anything about. Uh, uh, I think it's either Occult ABC or uh, uh, one of his books, one of his, uh, the many books of uh, Dr. Kotkoch. I, I bought the book, and I, I bought the book and I, t- and I took it home. And uh, normally I'm a little, I have been quite uh, uh, very careful in reading books, that uh, at the occult or something like that. Since before I became a Christian, I was familiar with uh, a little with the writings of uh, Doctor uh, Lopsa Grandpa, and I knew it was a very dangerous book. So I bought this particular book with the skepticism that I normally had for anything, any book of source of. Uh, of that sort. I got home and I discover one of the first things that you get when you when you read Dr. Kotko's book is that he wants you uh, very, very clearly that the, 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 the issue of occultism is not a territory that anybody can simply tread on. Uh, you, you have to be, your Christianity has to be serious. I discovered that the man was a very, very serious, deep Christian, deep Christian, 
one of the uh, most serious Christians that I've ever read, ever, as at that time. And the other thing was that I discovered that when it came to the issue of occultism, demonology, uh, satanism, the man was widely read. For, for the first book that I bought, I think, I think I finished the book that either that day or that night. Within, within 25, 24 hours, the, the book was, uh, was such that I just couldn't drop it. The following Monday or so, I, I went to the market. Now, I went to some of the biggest uh, bookshops in Lagos. Looking for more writings by by the author, Dr. Kotkoch. Uh, and I was able to I was able to buy a few more. I was able to buy a few more of, of his books. The, the main thing that I saw there were a lot of things in Dr. Koch book. Some of the truth is that the, the, the book confirms that Satan is alive and is alive everywhere on the planet. The research was so deep that uh, it's only somebody who is deceiving himself that tells, that tells you that, uh, you know, the magic... Uh, from my village is the most powerful. That that is, that that is the height of deception. That is what the devil tells everybody everywhere in the world, that the magic, and the magicians and the shamans from their village. They were the most powerful. If if you are if you are thinking of that, you are, you you are deceived. The the, the book makes makes that very very clear. The when I when I spoke about uh, the the most powerful shamans in the universe, that they are Europeans, they are Central Asians, Indians, and and so on. They are not even Africans. Uh, forget about uh, this useless epithet of uh, black magic. They are, they are not even Africans. So the the man described those things in such gripping details that every one of his books that was available in Lagos as at that time, maybe maybe four, maybe five or so, uh, I bought them. I bought them. To this particular, to the issue that we are treating today, the there was uh, there were various things in the books because Doctor Kurt Koch was a contemporary of uh, of William Branham, for example. He described the the ministry and the beliefs and the false prophecies of William Branham. The terrible influence of William Branham. On Christianity in India, for example, because Kotkoj was a contemporary of Catherine Kuhlman, Dr. Koch described episodes of his encounter with Catherine Kuhlman, and he was able to prove that the powers that Kat Catherine Kuhlman displayed, that they are not from God. They are not from the Lord Jesus Christ. That the, the, the what you see today, when uh, you see Benny Hinn touching people and they fall backward, that is a, that was, that, that's an invention of Catherine Kuhlman. Benny Hinn uh, got that from Catherine Kuhlman. And Catherine Kuhlman Evidently, once you once you get the details, 
Captain Coleman was a witch. Was a demoniac. Was not a Christian in any way at all. Uh, so, in a way, you heard that in 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 the book in, in some of the books of uh, Doctor Kotkoch. The one thing that settled the issue, of course, if you are reading the if you are reading Kotkoch's book, there were quite a few things on Pentecostalism and so on. There was a section where he was describing the the issue of tongues. There was a section where the doctor was describing the issue of tongues. And uh, of course, you know, you cannot describe, you cannot discuss Pentecostalism without touching on the issue of, uh, the issue of tongues. Uh, the doctor described an episode in Brazil, which I, I, can't, I can't forget up to today. He described an episode where a lady was being bombarded, maligned even, by Pentecostals. A Christian lady was being shamed by people who said that they, they spoke in tongues. First of all, let me tell you that in the in the writings of uh, Doctor Kolkoch on on tongues, uh, you, you could see it very clearly that speaking in tongues was not restricted to Protestants to evangelicals. The People in Catholic Church that venerate the idols of Mary and the idols of the saints, people that are really, strictly speaking, they are not really Christians, they speak in tongues. Uh, if I, th that was one of the uh, books, the, the, the sources that confirmed to me that speaking in tongues, there, there's nothing nothing peculiar about it of course of course you 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 get it that when we are talking of speaking in tongues we are not talking of the tongues of the bible we, we are we are talking of a uh, strange uh, uh uh nonsense strange uh, gibberish meaningless uh, babbles basically uh people simply uttering two or three syllable words uh, uh, and they are calling it tongues, things, things that uh, have no meaning anywhere. Uh, no, no, nobody, no, no group of people speak uh, such kind of thing anywhere in the world. So, uh, please, get that one very clearly. In the particular case of the lady in Brazil, the lady bought into the idea that she must speak in tongues. She fell for the trap. And she, just like me too, uh, before that time, uh, she was praying and she was fasting that God will, will baptize her with the Holy Spirit. And she too, she will start speaking in tongues. That prayer went and fasting went for went on for weeks but god did not answer the, the lady's prayer according to the story the lady fed up got fed up one evening and uh, in anger she she blotted out well jesus I've been praying to you all these weeks that you should give me the gift of speaking in tongues. But it appears that you will never budge. 
I know what nice to do. I will talk to your mother. As soon as she utter those words, truly, she started reeling out gibberish. She started speaking in tongues. But from that moment, she lost her peace. She could not pray again. She could not pray again. She could not do anything Christian. The only thing, if, if they say, let us pray, the only thing she could do was that her tongue was now ceased. She could only speak in tongues. And she became very worried. She, did, she knew that her life was now going south. Uh, she really didn't have fear of sin again. No, very little, no appetite to read the Bible. She didn't have an appetite to read the Bible again. Her Christianity totally nosedived. She was uh, in state, of course, uh, more, very often she was in depression. And, uh, and it was, uh, the depression would lift generally only when she started speaking in tongues. She, she knew, she knew she was in, she, she was, she was in something quite terrible. And she sought for, she sought for help. And that was the time Dr. Kurt Koch was on a visit to, to Brazil, on a missionary visit, to, to, on an evangelistic visit to Brazil. And the, the, lady, the lady came for counseling with Dr. Kurt Koch after a program. And uh, then Dr. Koch Koch asked that they should pray. She, she, he told everybody, he, the pastor, the lady, the ladies, uh, the, the local pastor, the interpreter, that uh, and maybe one or two that were there, that they, they should let us pray. As soon as let us pray was uttered. The lady started blabbing tongues. In so much that she, the, the other people really couldn't even concentrate in their prayer. So, Dr. Coach Coach did what is commanded in 1 John chapter 4. Verse 1, testing the Spirit. Testing the Spirit. Just like, just like Apostle Paul did in Acts chapter 16 with the demoniac lady that was following them. He, he took, issued out a word of command. You spirit that is speaking to, in tongues, from the focal cord of this lady, you must refill yourself in the name of Jesus Christ. I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to refill yourself. The lady was still blabbing her tongues. But this time around, she was now speaking plain Portuguese, plain Bra Brazilian Portuguese. And what was she saying? She was simply cursing the Lord Jesus Christ. The Spirit was now speaking plainly, no longer using, uh, using uh, gibberish. But what, what the Spirit was speaking were curses. On the Lord Jesus Christ. It took some time for the lady to realize what she was saying. 
the, 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 the words that were coming out of her mouth. And of course, when she did, she now, she now tried to cover her mouth. So, the identity of the spirit that was speaking in tongues through her became very plain, became very, very clear. The, the, the lady renounced the gift of speaking in tongues, prayed to the Lord Jesus Christ for forgiveness. The brethren around her prayed with her, and the lady was delivered from that moment. In subsequent uh, inquiries, uh, Dr. Kotkoch asked when the issue started, and the lady gave those details that you have just heard. Uh, that was one of the big things that I took away from the episodes of the ministry, the, the life work of Dr. Kotkoch. Uh, for whatever I had wanted to have from the Pentecostals, I knew, I knew Having the various evidences from Dr. Dr. Kotkoj and other sources, I knew definitely it was not the spirit of Christ that started Pentecostalism. And I knew whatever spirit started Pentecostalism were very dark spirits. that are based on deception, basically. That are based on deception. Doing things that are not plain, that are not clear. Befuddling people's face. While at the same time, heading them, pushing them towards eternity, so that they will not wake up to check their beliefs against the Bible. I must send uh, a few notes of warning. Uh, repeating, is, first of all, repeating one of the warnings that uh, I said in the video about the need not to double into uh, demonology or things of the occult uh, unless unless the Lord called you strictly into it. Uh, Dr. Kotkoch was quite heavy in warning people that you are not supposed to stray into this territory. Whatever is in the Bible, is on the pages of the Bible, must be enough for, for you as a Christian. Dr. Kotkoch, in a way, if you read this, if you read his books, you, you will discover that he was specially called to the work. He was specially called by the Lord Jesus Christ, specially equipped uh, by the Lord Jesus Christ. You, what you, you as I said in his, in the in the video, the all with which the Lord Jesus Christ was held by Dr. Kurt Koch is something that can never, that you can never avoid. It can never elude you if you read this book. You discover that Dr. Kurt Koch was a thorough, deep worshiper 
of the Lord Jesus Christ. That is something that you can never miss reading the book of the of Dr. Kotkoch. And even in spite of that, he wants that the teachings on demonology and whatever it, whatever Soran said, they are not things that everyone is called into. Very, very special, you could say, very, very special calling of very, very few. Uh, uh, I do not know much, but I can tell you that since the 1980s, I have not come across anyone in the Christian world that had the knowledge and the depth and are real Christians in that field. So, please, uh, 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 you must, everyone must be one. Do not get what I'm saying and you think this is, this is a field that you can go into. The devil is real. He's real. Uh, the other warning I have to sound is, uh, is on the materials of Dr. Kotkoch itself. Uh, a few years ago, uh, I think maybe four or five years ago, I was looking for some of his materials. That is some of the books that, I've, that I had before that uh, some people had borrowed and they didn't, they, in fact, most of the books, mo most of his books, people had borrowed them and they, they never returned them back to me. So I went on the internet and I saw what I saw one of the books, and I down, I downloaded it. Only to discover that about two thirds into the book, a Catholic monk had inserted materials that were not in the printed copies, in the printed books, into the internet fashion. Please, let, let me, you, I know people who come to my website are generally uh, very conscientious and serious people. But I have to sound the, the alarm that please, generally speaking, do not go on the internet and download the PDF copies of Dr. Kotkosh book. Let me tell you, I have got nothing to do with the sales of Dr. Kotkosh books. So please don't, don't think that I'm saying this in order to have any reward, any financial reward. I'm not in, I, I'm not in any agency. It's better, but because this is a work that is for Christians, for children of God. If you if you must have anything to do with Dr. Koch, Koch and his writings, buy the books. I was shocked. I, I could only see that this material that I was reading after some time, these are not the writings of, the, of Dr. Koch, Koch. Dr. Koch Koch does not I never wrote about the efficacy of worshipping Mary when you are doing exorcism, for example. He will never write any such thing. But in the PDF copy that is on the internet, you already have those kind of writings included. So please, uh, whoever is interested, you should note and take note of that. If, if you need to read anything on Dr. Kurt Koch, uh, they, they, they are, you have those caveats. You have to be very careful. Do not go on the internet and start downloading the PDF copies. You are, some of them are already corrupted with 
writings from Catholic mystics. Dr. Koch Koch was never into mysticism. <laughs>